grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning and a very warm welcome to Mass and to those of you who are watching this on YouTube, you two are very welcome here today for this the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. So we place ourselves before the Lord today, let us seek his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let me sing to my friend the song of his love for his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted choice vines in it. In the middle, he built a tower. He dug a press there too. He expected it to yield grapes, but sour grapes were all that it gave. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judea, I ask you to judge between my vineyard and me. What could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? I expected it to yield grapes. Why did it yield sour grapes instead? Very well, I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge for it to be grazed on and knock down its walls for it to be trampled on. I will lay it waste, unpruned, undug, overgrown by the briar and the thorn. I will command the clouds to rain no rain on it. Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judea, that chosen plant. He expected justice, but found bloodshed, integrity, but only a cry of distress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. It stretched out its branches to the sea. To the great river, it stretched out its root shoots. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravished by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything 
I have learned from my Father. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants, thrashed one, killed another, stoned a third. Next he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir, come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, He will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyards to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the Scriptures? It was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then, that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. threatened invasion of the Assyrians taking over Jerusalem. And again, it's very hard for us because even although by the very nature of us being here we are religious, nonetheless we are secular. In the past people would always look to see God's hand. The moment I'm reading a biography of the Emperor Charlemagne and surprising how much simply everything is in God's control. So too for the people of the Old and New Testament. God was in control of every single action. So if Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, then that was God's action. And therefore they had to look to themselves to see where they'd gone wrong. So the prophet Isaiah is trying to bring them back to the Lord in order to avert disaster. So this image then of the vineyard is, of course, deeply woven into the Old Testament uh, as an image of Israel, as a picture of who Israel is, the Lord's vineyard. But always, 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 it's a purpose of a vineyard is to bear fruit in order to make wine. In other words, there's got to be produce. It's got to be productive. Jesus picks up something of that theme today. He will pick up echoing words of Isaiah. But then he will begin to exercise this extra part of the parable. We will speak of the prophets, the prophets who came, who were killed and rejected. And eventually he will speak of himself in the Paschal Mystery, the Son who comes and who will be rejected and who will be executed, crucified outside of the city, outside of the vineyard. But it's the same theme, looking to produce fruit, looking to produce the fruit of integrity, the fruit of good works, the fruit of holiness, all of those things. Of course, you then begin to get a change. It's not simply the land of Israel that's the vineyard, it's the human heart that's the vineyard. It's we ourselves who are to produce the fruit from within. And so we internalize the imagery. We are the vineyard in which, by God's grace, the Spirit has been planted to produce fruit. Again, the fruit of integrity, holiness, love, 
compassion, all of those things. And so again, we are always having to ask ourselves, is my life fruitful? Is my life, am I drawing up the Spirit of God into my life in order to be able to produce this fruit? Because again, we're reminded that we're not our own. We're bought by a price. Jesus dies for us and purchases us for God from evil and darkness and brokenness. And he does so in order that we might ourselves produce fruit, the fruit of humanity. This is the last Sunday in the season of creation. And again, I'm reminded that the whole earth is the vineyard of the Lord. And we are but its tenants. We don't own it. The owner is God himself. And tenants are there to produce fruit for the owner, not themselves to destroy the vineyard. And as we look around today, we see the destructive hand of humanity as we are uncontrolled in our use of material resources. And so we're reminded again, we are not our, it's, this earth is not ours, and yet it's the only thing we have. It doesn't belong to us. There is no other home. Destroy it, and there's nowhere else to go. So we're reminded again that we're here as tenants in this good earth, this vineyard of the Lord, to produce the fruit of good works, of care, of tenderness, and that we are to husband this earth, not to ravish it, not to destroy it. So let's stand and bring our prayers before the Lord. <laughs> so let us bring our prayers into the presence of the Lord of hosts, who promises peace to those who pray. For the Pope and all the bishops, that they may teach us God's ways. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For people who worry that the peace of God may fill them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For homeless families and children, that they may not be forgotten. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our friends who are sick, that God may be close to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died and all who mourn after them, that eternal peace and comfort may be theirs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So, a moment's silence, we bring ourselves and our own needs before the Lord. I offer the sacrifice of this Mass for the people of this parish, for yourselves and for your families, and for our extended family over YouTube at this time. And let's ask Mary, the mother of Jesus, to pray with us and to pray for us that we might be fruitful in our Christian life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. God of hosts, you turn your face to your people let your grace fill us according to our needs, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you, too. Lift up your hearts. It is not the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and just. It is truly <coughs> right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For, having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we appear. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Christ. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to you. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Leo our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, 
and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. The kingdom of glory and you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. So may the peace of Christ go from this altar into your hearts, your lives and your hearts. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. Before we receive communion, let's pray for those who are still shielding, those who are still anxious, and with them we make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, 
Although you have already come, I embrace you, unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. I ask you to stand, please. May Almighty God bless you as you come forward for Holy Communion and go forth from this place. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest in you and those whom you love.
Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.